Good morning and welcome to St Andrew's Brighton on this the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Today we focus on an old favourite story from the Bible, Moses and the burning bush. Moses was somewhat sceptical that he was up to the task that God had set for him. He also wanted to know God's name so that he could give an answer if challenged. God identifies himself as I am who I am. This is a special service today as we are also joined by Bishop Paul Barker, who will receive our Director of Music, Calvin Bowman, into the Anglican Church as a communicant member. You might like to congratulate Calvin on the email below. I hope you enjoy this service. Good morning and welcome to St Andrew's Brighton on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Lucky 13. If you want to become a disciple of Jesus, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son has shown the way of the cross to be the way of life, transform and renew our minds, that we may not be conformed to this world, but may offer ourselves wholly to you as a living sacrifice, through Jesus Christ our Saviour, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Priziites, the Hivites, and the Jezebites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, and I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be confined to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as one, for as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling rock to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there will be some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The burning bush has been used as a symbol of God for centuries. Often, the following Latin phrases are associated with those symbols. Net tamen consumbatur, and it was not consumed, and ardens sed virens, burning but flourishing. It is these words that turn the burning bush symbol into some living words for today. Those words are there to remind us that even though the bush was burning, it was not consumed. The bush represents the people of Israel. The fire is their persecution in the land of Egypt. The burning without consumption shows that in spite of the persecution of Israel, it will not be destroyed. The message was regardless of what the people of Israel had done. God will continue to be in the midst of their affliction. 
Our text today is the story of Moses and the burning bush. Many of us will remember this best from Sunday school. A story about a message from God to Moses. On a scorching hot day in Midian, when shepherd Moses was watching over the sheep of his father-in-law, Jethro, suddenly a bush catches fire. Moses moved a little closer in order to watch as the bush is burnt. But instead of burning up, instead of being consumed, the bush keeps on burning. Moses wonders, how can this be? He moves even closer, and as he does, he heard a voice that sounded as if it was coming from the bush. Moses, Moses. Whilst avid gardeners may talk to their plants, they don't usually hear the plants speaking back. Moses stares at the bush and hears his name. Turning around, he sees no one. Not knowing where the voice comes from, he simply replies, Here I am. As Moses moves towards the fire, the voice commanded him to come no closer and to remove his sandals. For the place he was standing on was holy ground. The voice says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses stopped and hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God and to be in God's presence. Then God said to Moses, Come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. Remember two weeks ago when the angel told Mary that she was going to give birth to God's son? She questioned how that might happen, but accepted the task set before her. Moses, however, expresses feelings of inadequacy. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. God then turned the who am I question, said in weakness, into the all-powerful proclamation, I am who I am. No matter what God has called us to do, we have to put our trust in him and do it. God told Moses, I will be with you. And he assured that what he lacked, God would supply. When we say, who am I? God responds, I am who I am. I am has sent you. There are three takeaways from this morning's passage. When God gets our attention, we must listen. When God is calling us for a certain mission, God will get our attention. When he does, we must listen to what he says, as in Moses' case. God often gets our attention by allowing uncommon events to occur in our lives. Sometimes they are not pleasant events. God, they are always... Sometimes they are not pleasant events. They are God's way of tapping us on the shoulder so that we will take notice and to listen to what he has to say. We have to move closer to God to experience his presence in our life. Secondly, God reveals himself to us. When God called Moses into service, he knew that Moses was ready to execute God's plan. But Moses found it very hard to believe. He was very hesitant. His response to God was, what makes you think I can pull this off? God's response to Moses was, I will be with you. God does not rebuke Moses. He wanted Moses to know that he was the one, the one who was going to rescue his people from slavery. Moses was assigned for duty as God's agent. Thirdly, God reveals his plan. God guided Moses with specific instructions on how he wanted Moses to accomplish his mission. 
he had to assemble the elders of Israel, then go to the king of Egypt, and finally go to the Israelites. In order for this mission to go smoothly, Moses had to be obedient. If he didn't, he was sure to fail in his mission. Obedience to God is paramount. Jesus was obedient to God, even to death on a cross. Amen. Bishop Paul, Calvin has already been baptised and has formerly been a communicant member of the Uniting Church. He now asks to be received into communicant membership of the Anglican Church of Australia and seeks our prayers in fellowship of this parish. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray, God of wisdom and love, source of all good, by your Holy Spirit strengthen your servant Calvin and guide him in your way of peace and love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Calvin, do you stand by the Christian confession and commitment made at your baptism? I do. And do you desire to be admitted into communicant membership of the Anglican Church of Australia and accept her doctrine and order? I do. Well, Calvin, we welcome you. We acknowledge that you are a Christian from another denomination. Uh, I notice Calvin has said that he's holding his baptismal Bible in his hand. I think mine's long gone, but uh, well done that you've kept yours. So we recognise you, Calvin, as a baptised and communicant member of the Christian Church. We receive and welcome you into the communion of the Anglican Church. And let me just lay hands as I pray a blessing. Calvin, may the Holy Spirit direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom in the fellowship of this church. Amen. Amen. Congratulations and welcome, and welcome to the ministry that you'll have here at St Andrews in particular too. Thank you. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You give us life. You give us love, you give us yourself. We come to give our lives and our love to you. Cleanse us from all sin and make a clean heart within us, that we may do what you want us to do and be the people you want us to be. We give thanks for the examples of the saints in their battle against evil and in their striving to do good. We remember before you all who have struggled with temptation, all who are pulled by divided loyalties. We pray for those who go through the rituals but miss the reality. We ask your blessing on all who are scorned and rejected because of their relationship with Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the work of the social services and all who work for the care of others. We remember before you all who are caught up in vice or degradation. We pray for all addicts that they may find help and hope. We bless all who struggle with standards and make a stand against the evils that are around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice in our homes and in family life. We thank you for all who have given their lives in caring for us and in loving us. We ask your blessing upon our families and friends. We remember before you all who are lonely, all who feel uncared for or unwanted. We pray for all who suffer from neglect or a breakdown in relationships. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. As we rejoice in life, we remember all who feel that life is meaningless and empty. We ask your blessing on the despairing and the despondent. We pray for all who are treated as unclean through illness or disability. We remember all who work to combat disease and infections. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
We rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints. We remember before you all our loved ones departed, giving thanks for their life and their care. We offer our hearts and minds and whole being to you, good and gracious God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ said to all who turn to him. Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. We are the body of Christ. His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and with archangels, with St. Andrew and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray in our own language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ 
in the remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Acknowledging that many cannot join in the physical sacrament this morning, let us pray together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself, and keep me in your care. Amen. Bountiful God, at this table you graciously feed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May we, who have reached out our hands to receive this sacrament, be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth in our lives. We who have seen the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom and come to worship you with all your saints forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. <laughs>